Hi everyone, Steph here from the Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next installment of my bookshelf tour. Today we are going to be exploring bookshelf 7, which if I'm honest is essentially a bookshelf where a whole lot of things got thrown into there. So it is full of books, artifacts, non-bookish things. So yes, let's take a look at the overview and then I will start talking about each of the different items. Shelf 7 is honestly a bit of a hodgepodge of a shelf because it is anything that is oversized and doesn't fit on the other shelves as well as a whole stack of teaching books that I need to get to at some point. Alright, if you have missed any of the previous bookshelf tours I will leave them linked down below but let's talk a little bit more about the specific things that you can find on bookshelf 7. As you will have seen it's overcrowded, it's full of completely random things, but let's talk about them. First up there is my Resand plushie which came in a bake rate box. I also have a Queen collection from Possum Magic. This was produced in 2017. Possum Magic is one of my favourite childhood books and something I read to every class every year multiple times. So I had to buy the actual collection and it's still in its packaging. Another random item on my shelf is the Mars flag that I made as part of the first Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. Uh, there's also my old iPad that probably doesn't even work anymore but apparently I still kept it. Okay so let's start with some of the books. I have two books by Katie O'Neill, The Tea Dragon Festival and The Tea Dragon Society, both of which are gorgeous gorgeous graphic novels that are inclusive and diverse and just absolutely stunning to look at. There's also Your Dream Life Starts Here by Christina Carlson who is the founder of Kiki K. This is sort of her workbook for creating your ideal life. I have read most of it it's something that I do need to come back to at some point though. Next up there is a bunch of teaching books. So super quickly there is The Formative Five which is a book on formative assessment. I think in maths. Powerful Understanding by Adrian Gear. Facilitating Teacher Teams and Authentic PLCs by Venables. That one I really need to read soon. Word Nerds which is a book all about teaching vocabulary. Visible Learning and the Science of How We Learn by John Hattie and Gregory Yates. Then I have a series of books that were published by PETA which is the Primary English Teachers Association of Australia and they put out these books every quarter. So there is Classroom Talk, Teaching with Intent, Scaffolding Academic Language with Marginalised Students and then Teaching with Intent to literature-based literacy teaching and learning, Talking the Talk, Tell Me Your Story, The Alphabetic Principle and Beyond, and A Literature Companion for Teachers. Most of those I have dipped into at different points but not read cover to cover so that is another ongoing project. There is another vocabulary book, Bringing Words to Life, and also Clarity, What Matters Most in Learning, Teaching and Reading, which is all about educational leadership. Also on the shelf is my bind up of my 2017 and I think 2018 planner layouts. So once I took them out of my planner I just bound them up with some rings and kept it. This is an old planner that I used to use, one of my happy planners from 2016 to 2017. Told you this shelf was weird. I also have Why is Uranus Upside Down by Fred Watson. This is just a random collection of science questions that get answered. I have my official guide to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum which is one of my favourite museums ever and I got to see lots and lots of planes and lots and lots of spaceships so I bought this to remind me of that. And of course random artifacts. A few years back when we had the Love Osway month bingo challenge I created my own little passport of all the books that I read so I did keep that because it was a bit like journaling. I also have the Walking the City of Literature map which is possibly out of date now and I haven't done this for a while because you know Melbourne's been locked down but I've still got the map. I have my memorabilia photo from when I went to the CN Tower with my best friend and her daughter when I was in Canada. I also have a box of vintage Marvel collectible postcards which are quite literally postcards with classic vintage covers on them. There's also a photo of me from when I went to Universal Studios and had a photo with Bumblebee. I have one of my travel journals. I think this one was from this one might have been from New Zealand. Yes, it was from New Zealand. Usually what happens with me in travel journals is I'm really good for the first three quarters of the trip and then I'm really slack for the last quarter of the trip. But I did keep this one so I must have done more in it than I thought I did. I also have the Wonderland book from Thames and Hudson which was produced for Acme when they had their Alice in Wonderland exhibit. It's gorgeous, it's got pink sprayed edges, lots of quotes but also lots of really big photographs of all of the Alice in Wonderland history and memorabilia and artwork and quotes. I mean it's a gorgeous book. I think I saw that exhibit three or four times. I went by myself then I went with a colleague then we took the kids there for work and I think I may even have gone with my best friend as well. Another oversized book that doesn't really fit anywhere else on my shelves is Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson's 
Greek Heroes book. I have a couple of that random art prints because I didn't have anywhere else to put them. But I do love them. They're very whimsical. I have a scrapbook from when I was in grade one. This was my handwriting book, which mum found and gave to me so that I could show my grade one kids a few years back. Now it just lives on the shelf because it's got nowhere else to go. There is this gorgeous how to draw plants and small creatures book that was gifted to me one year by a friend from work. And it's all just how to draw really beautiful, whimsical little images. I also have two 3D expanding pocket guides, one for Washington DC from when I was there and also one for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. These are gorgeous sort of pop out maps. I thought they were a cute way to keep memories from when I was traveling in the States. The last two items are my day in the life scrapbooking things from back when I was scrapbooking. So this one I think was just a general scrapbook of things that were happening at the time. It seems to go from May 2015 until June. I haven't looked at these in a while. Look, there's Benny. And then this one was a specific week in the life, I think from 2015. That was my opening page. This one looks like it went from the 17th of August until the 23rd of August. The purpose behind this was to literally just document the little things that you do every day. Just the little things. I should probably spend a little bit more time going back through these things because they've been sitting on my shelf for ages. All right, that is everything that was on Bookshelf 7, the most randomest of bookshelves you could possibly imagine. Next time we come back, we will be looking at bookshelf eight, which is the start of the second tall bookshelves and it will be back to novels, I promise. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are doing well and staying safe and I will see you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.